Today we're going to talk about digital technology and how it can drive value for your business. Welcome to Profile 3 TV and today I'm joined by Cameron Stewart and I'm very very excited to talk to this gent, a local businessman and uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself so please tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Uh, we've actually just met yeah, 20 here. minutes ago so <laughs> I'm finding out myself so tell me and, and the audience uh, a little bit about yourself and your company, it'd be brilliant. So yeah, I'm, I'm Cameron, um, I'm born and raised in Belfast, mm -hmm. I've, I've had a pretty crazy career if you could even call it that of, of a series of businesses that I've run and been involved in and now I run a digital product studio called Dawson Andrews mm -hmm. um, along with two other amazing founders um, we're about four years old now and yeah we're having great fun excellent and and uh, you've got a uh, an amazing stable of clients I've been watching uh, your company from afar yeah uh, with, with uh, admiration uh, oh thanks so, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so yeah. uh, tell us some of the companies you work with and actually what you do for those companies sure so uh, yeah I, I did the digital product industry I guess was born out of the web industry where you know static websites kind of grew up into products that, that kind of operated as a business function for companies so on on kind of top end front end client facing stuff you've got websites but they're they're now not just sitting there as kind of static web pages they're actually pulling in leads or selling things or um, signing you up to a system that is in their back end that allows you to do something so you know we we design anything from you know, e-commerce stores through to, you know, services like a, you know, yoga, like a yoga booking platform um, is one that we do. We're also building a sports, like a sports teams management type app with Andrew Trimble at the minute. That's, that's our first content video that's going out in a few weeks. So Excellent. you'll have to let me know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, let me know how I do. Um, so yeah, like we have a whole range of, of services um, in, in, in terms of the clientele but really what we do is we build software that that serves a function for a business um, and I think the where we've where we've kind of got a name for ourselves I guess it's just that we've we kind of cut we cut the crap excuse my French and we just kind of jumped down to the business goals you know rather than designing a nice exciting new website that looks great um, we kind of we ask very real questions of you know what's your business model and how do you how do you make money you know and and only when we really understand the intricacies of that do we say okay well here's some tools that you could use uh, to actually you know achieve your business goals mm -hmm. so that's what we've been doing clients um, we've got a bunch of local clients we're currently. I'm working with ICC Belfast, which is used to be the waterfront, now ICC, and the Ulster Hall, and kind of helping them with their whole digital um, offering. Um, and further afield, our, our landmark client was Toys R Us. Um, yeah. they, we were their digital partner in the year leading up to their bankruptcy, basically. Yeah. Um, so they came to us and, and they, were, they were doing one and a half billion online e-commerce and the, I mean, the story online is that Amazon was beating them up, um, but they were actually one of the first people on the web. You know, they like in terms of online commerce, they were forerunners at the very start, and they actually had, you know, when we got into their back end, they had amazing conversion rates, and we knew they could be better. But you know, as far as global e-commerce was working, you know, it was they were they were doing okay. You know, it wasn't what the press was saying the real issue was that they were overloaded with debt um sorry yeah that le leverage debt that it, it's it's what's fueled most of the bankruptcies these Traditional days Traditional business and then obviously then online that doesn't have the debt they don't carry that exactly and and they you know they had so many you know they had so many retail stores yeah. that were arguably too big they hadn't scaled back on that and then there was a leverage buyout that happened and that just meant they had this massive debt bill that they just mm. it was basically the world's biggest mortgage you know that like they couldn't 
like they were valued at twelve and a half billion. You can imagine what yeah. their you know mortgage bill was yeah. every month. They couldn't pay it. So online was doing well, and and they came to us and they had all the stock, all the infrastructure, all the on you know they had four hundred thousand SKUs. You know, like the amount of products they had was just incredible. So they knew they could compete with Amazon and. But they also knew the end was kind of near. So we came in and just said, look, there's no point in reinventing all of this or, or you know, doing massive changes. But of the list of, I think there was about 260 things on the list that they gave us. We said, look, give us 20, you know, like we'll, we'll start small. Mm -hmm. And we kind of picked the ones that we thought would drive the highest value. So um, I think, you know, all in all, they started with, they started by doing, doing one and a half billion in online revenues when we started with them and then when they closed it was just over 1.8 so it I mean 300 million was a pretty good jump and it was our it was our second year in business you know so we just we had this in baptism by fire in terms of online products and um, it really kind of gave us a brilliant case study to kind of rock on from and and get more clients ultimately. Incredible. And isn't it amazing how the, the I guess the retail market, so we're talking about retail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, traditional into online and actually the mm. traditional is causing a problem for the companies that are trying to go online and they could have been very yeah. good companies. But Yeah, there's a lot of legacy tech that they, that they're these guys inherit and then there's you know, e commerce directors are brought in to innovate and <laughs> uh, you know bring a change but their their hands are tied in a lot of respects so you know sometimes there's just massive back-end overhauls that need to happen but but at other times you, you know that's not necessary and you know sometimes the, the smallest tweak on the front end can actually show a real a really good conversion rate increase so incredible and do you think in general the traditional companies going online will always face problems like this because there's so many traditional businesses that still need to move on we've seen massive changes in retail yeah i don't i'm not sure i like i think i think there's a hope for everyone mm -hmm. you know if you can if you can move quickly enough and build agile into your processes then then of course there's hope for everyone um it's interesting to see some of the smaller more um, agile platforms starting to compete you know like Toys R Us was on Oracle ATG, which is one of the big old school. They've wow. been around for as longer than I've been alive, probably. Um, Shopify, for instance, mm -hmm. when I when I start when I first started my first company, I used Shopify, and it was it was for your one man band that doesn't know how to create a website but can run an e commerce store. They've now got Shopify Plus, which is a, it's a competitor to Oracle, you know, it, 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 I mean, they're not on the same scale. It's laughable in terms of their, their size, but in terms of functionality, they're, they tick 99% of the boxes. And, it, you know, I'm just, what I'm noticing is these, these big guys that take maybe a year of integration um, are, I think they're going to really struggle against the, the nimble mm -hmm. ones that can just move way, way faster. Speed. It's all speed now, isn't it? It's like how fast can you? And it's not even first to market, but how can you react? Because oh. things are changing so fast. Yeah, totally, totally. And like I think, the the egos are are slowly disintegrating as well. Even with our designers, you know, they they were typically used to, you know, hiding their screen for a few days before they show to the sure. world their creations. You know, and we've had to beat that out of them. You know, because it's not it's just not the case anymore. So. Instead of doing that, we're kind of just we're coming to clients within you know within a day of a conversation, and mm -hmm. like I was speaking to a client the other day, and he said I just couldn't get over how fast you you brought me something, mm -hmm. and it's not the I think there there's a hesitation in in investing too heavily into something, but people are still doing it, whereas we're just kind of trying to get it wrong as fast as we can, you know, because it gives you something to point to, you know, I like this don't like this, this and this, and then you go back and change it. So the more iterations you can do, the quicker you can test as well. That's mm. the thing, the web, you can test on 3% of your audience. You don't need to risk the house, yeah. you know? So we've got, a, we've got a different way of working, you know, in comparison to the old web agency, yeah. which was kind of, we'll take 
10 weeks, we'll build you something and then you'll pay your check. Mm -hmm. We'll build something in two weeks yes. and we'll say, okay, we've got eight weeks to get this right. Yes, and, and that's again, so that's, that's how you are different. That's how you have grown so quickly as well. I mean, we're not different. Product but, teams all around the world are doing this. Um, yeah, okay, but but traditional agencies, you you would argue, wouldn't do this, or maybe the traditional way that would have been done a few years ago. I'd say yeah, from from my experience of hiring agencies and and working alongside them, my my typical experience anyway has been agree a brief, not see them for four, <laughs> six, ten weeks, <laughs> <laughs> and then they come back with you know, and and it's kind of everyone's nervous yes. you know and I, it just it it's a facade it, it doesn't need to work that way and we find it works better just being up front so we just we have weekly check-ins you see whatever what our designers have been up to all week mm -hmm. and that way you're just you're tweaking as you go um rather than getting in a lot of trouble having invested all your time and then you have to yeah disaster you, the, the client doesn't like it yes yeah. back to square one and you've lost the time and the hours so disaster and over and the client the thing is the client holds the insights you know like we're we're only experts in digital we're not experts in the, in what their businesses are so we the more that we bring them in and like clients don't under don't a lot of the time they underestimate how much they really know about their audience mm -hmm. But when you put things in front of them and say, would your audience like this? They know straight up, you know, they can tell you straight away. So the more you can do that, the better your product's going to be. Very interesting. And again, it's the same for any business that's serving a client. You need to engage with the client more. Totally. And the internet definitely, I have to say, the amount of changes in the last couple of years, it's really driving. It's faster and faster. Yeah. And it's changing again, I'm sure. Like, like myself, you remember when it was the internet was free, mm. everything was free, movies were free, mm. music was free, but now yeah. we're used to paying subscriptions. Yep. And uh, even Google Maps this year has been, um, they're now charging companies uh, depending on usage for maps, yep. whereas before it was all free. Yep. So the whole mindset's changing now. The, the, where will, you know, in five years, what will be accepting? So oh. the industry is grown up it's uh, incredible the changes oh it really has i mean the subscription model is amazing it, you know the first the first company that or the first product that we built is a local startup called nice it's a mood boarding tool for creative teams you guys should use it um but it's okay. it's based on a subscrip subscription model you know it's a typical SaaS product mm -hmm. and you it's a it's it's a brilliant model because once you've sold to someone and you know that you're providing value, you've just got this recurring revenue and that that was the business model that really excited us at the start and you know we're hoping to um, launch a bunch of our own products that can do similar as well. Oh, oh top secret. Uh, apart from <laughs> one, I can tell you about one. Right, but, uh, well, but uh, so nice, uh, so nice, yeah. N-I-C-E? N-I-I-C-E dot co. Excellent. We'll check it out. Shout out to them then. Brilliant. So we'll check it out. No, thank you. Very good. Any tips? Welcome. And and you mentioned one product. So yeah. So the so well, this is our this is our kind of weird business model, I guess that we've that we founded the company on because the services industry is amazing, but mm. the margins are are hard, and um, ultimately you're not you're not building much value in the company. You know, you can grow to a hundred staff, but the value of an agency is. It's dubious, um, and where our, where we really have value is in our product expertise. So if we have the freedom to build something, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So last year, the first opportunity to do that presented itself, where we had a client who was um, was basically an online classified site for uh, used cars, and they were paying an awful lot of money every year for live chat, offshore someone responding to customers mm -hmm. and turning those customers into phone calls for salespeople mm -hmm. and they were selling those those leads to the to the dealerships right. mm -hmm. so they could justify the cost that they were paying the business was working but they had 12 years of conversation history and the goal wasn't necessarily to be smart it was to turn these conversations into phone calls with mm -hmm. salesmen because ultimately no one buys a car online they, they buy it from someone yeah. So we kind of said, look, we could, we've got a bit of machine learning experience. We can build out that capability a bit more. And we think we could build a chatbot for this to, to basically replace what those people are doing. 
So they had conversion rates of the live chat and th they had all their data and they basically said, we don't believe you, you know, we don't, we don't think you can do it. Excellent. So we said, well, we think we can. So how about you pay us if we deliver on the numbers and we'll go into a joint venture together if, you know, it, if it kicks off and we'll kind of attack the, the autos industry basically. Mm -hmm. So they said, yeah, game on, you know, we'll do it. So we invested a year of development in, in building this and a few months ago we launched it and we're on over 250 dealers' websites now. Um, we made 36 pounds last week. Um, it's, you know, it's it's very slowly getting there. It made two pounds on its first day. Amazing. But, you know, we're going to be money. we're going to be on a thousand sites pretty soon. Yeah. And very soon that, you know, that's going to become a little piece of technology that provides very real value for for dealers. They're very happy to pay. I think it's something I should know the economics, but it's something like two pounds a lead. Mm -hmm. They're very happy to pay two pounds for a phone call with someone who Part wants to nothing. buy a five yeah. grand car, it's ten amazing. grand car. Yeah. Um, so our hope as as an agency or as a company, I guess, is to to build a bunch of these product companies that generate revenue when we sleep and in our spare time, you know, which every agency has, there's always underutilized time. Mm -hmm. Take that 20% of time that doesn't go to clients and just put it into something that's actually going to add value to our company. So develop out, it's called Ripley Chat. That's the name of I'm it. I'm going to check that out too. Amazing. Ripley.chat. Brilliant. It out. No, yeah. check it out for sure. That's brilliant. And uh, it's, it's so interesting that like ourselves so we, we yeah similar we, we, we actually are on the same path we see that the agency model is i'd say wouldn't say broken but it's tough it's and very it's hard unsustainable uh, actually as well and as businesses uh, again in time you, you know businesses are becoming more educated which is brilliant for yeah. businesses they have to be to survive and um the model's changing the agency model's changing yeah and and they need to bring maybe more uh, resources in house so it's kind of like what you said where you know we don't we don't practice on our clients. We prove our we prove what we're good at on our own stuff, and th there's there's something really to to be said about that. You know, like it's amazing. we're not we don't mm. just provide services yeah. and charge you a fee for it. Yeah. We actually do this ourselves. Yeah. We actually Standard. make our own money, and more. I think more interesting for clients is actually that we we know how much t like how much time costs. Mm -hmm. We know that if we, you know five days of a developer's time, that costs us as an agency. It's not that doesn't. It's, it's not, not just free. this. Th it's not free. So if that if those five days don't return, you know, yeah, don't create a return for Ripley, then we we question that you know in the weekly stand up mm -hmm. when we're saying, well, where did that money go? Mm -hmm. You know, let's invest it better next time. Mm -hmm. And I get. I think it's it's really helped us as an agency to get into the mind of a client, and you know, we're not just kind of throwing out ideas like you could do this you could do this it's it's more here's an idea or here's something we could build for you here's the value we think it could drive and here's what we think it would cost and when you've got five ten of those you can you can see the ratio and you can say well look it's pretty obvious we should invest in these three because yes. they're going to drive the most value mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there and then we'll maybe go on to the next mm -hmm. three um it's a different way of working but it, it's how it's how Airbnb work, it's how Uber work, it's, it's how all the top product studios are working, you know. Incredible. It's just amazing again, that's again why probably you, you guys stood out, the innovation and the, the way you're looking at the business model. We're just copying them. <laughs> <laughs> but how many people aren't? About it. How many people aren't? Yeah. It's amazing. They'll people be there soon. Sleeping. They'll be there soon. Well, I don't know. People are sleeping at the wheel. We we'll see. <laughs> that's, that's why That's why we're in business because yeah, the internet's been there how many years and I how come people aren't masters of it already? Yeah. It's like the most, it's like the industrial revolution. Like it's retail the digital is a revolution. You're right. You're right. What's it? Thirteen high street shops close every day. We're talking about retail, you know. I it's know, like, scary. Like no one's surprised. Like we're going five G next year. It's going to transform back to video. Yeah. We do a bit of video, but um, like five G next year. So uh, mm. video's going to load ten to a hundred times faster. We're going to download a HD movie in forty seconds. Maybe not in Belfast. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, yeah, eight years. No, joking. Actually, EE uh, uh, EE um, have announced that. Um, Belfast is one of the cities to launch uh, 5G. So yeah, no, probably wow. not not where you or I are sitting. But uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it'll, it'll it'll slither uh, down High Street so they can say they did it. We we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, but, who um, knows? So 
you've been an entrepreneur, and this uh, interests me as well, you've been an entrepreneur since you've been like this high, um, selling, yeah. so you've been through, you've been through, and like, again, yeah, I'm a parent and I'm looking at my own children and thinking, I, I'm on the hear stories, you know, selling the lemonades, like I did it at yeah. football games, I sold strawberries, uh, which is amazing, and you would, everyone else was selling drinks, and I sold, you know, hot and cold drinks, and I was selling strawberries, nice. made a killing for nice. about three weeks in a row with the football, football and then, Everyone was selling strawberries, and that was it. The market was flooded. It was yeah, amazing yeah. when it lasted, but it just, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. Hmm. So, wh where did you start? Oh, gee, do you want the honest answer? Or? Well, I mean, it. the first thing There's I. There's no one watching that. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the first thing I ever sold was grasshoppers. Wow. Yeah, I've never really told anyone amazing. that. Amazing. I, I lived in Canada when I was 10 and 11, and I. There was. There was there were a lot of fishermen around and there were I loved catching grasshoppers Incredible. like it was such a I just my dad taught me to do it when I was young I just loved like chasing them yeah. so I, I started catching them and then one guy said here I'll I'll buy them off you you know yeah. they're good bait like the, these big Horse chunky yeah, things yeah, fish love them. big fish do yeah. so I thought yeah here I could sell these so started selling those that business didn't do great but I, I did it for a while like a summer basically and I, I don't know, it's just always been, I've, I've, I've always kind of pointed to my dad who is stingy and don't, never gave me much pocket money, you know, and oh it's a, you know, it's a blessing in disguise. I'm following that mantra. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I'll do the same with my kids, yeah. you know, if I'm lucky enough to have them. Like they, it, it creates a necessity and I just had to, I had to do it. So yeah. I went from that, selling sweets in school out of a locker, made good a lot of money out of that. Um, then went on to designer clothing and started an eBay store, became a power seller on eBay, was selling about probably about 20 items a day um, in school, which was, I mean, that was, that was pretty good for a small little e-commerce store. And then off the back of that started a clothing company because I just thought it's pretty easy. So I've always, I don't know, I've always had that mindset of, of just kind of noticing an opportunity in a market and and trying to fulfill a need go for it and the brand was called arc yeah it was called arc it was a clothing it was a clothing brand uh and it stood for acts of random kindness yeah. so there was a simple premise around it that every time you wore it you were encouraged to do an act of random kindness for a stranger so by its very nature it just kind of marketed itself people were doing arcs as they became known to strangers in the street they were saying, what the hell, why are you doing this? Oh look, ARC, next thing there online, you know, ordering a t-shirt and, you know, three months later, we were in 15 countries. We we raised finance, opened an office in St. Stephen's Green in Dublin and, you know, hired a team and, you know, it, it was amazing. But it was at the height of the Celtic Tiger, mm -hmm. everything had just crashed. So all the, all the stories were just, desperation and hopelessness mm -hmm. and along came this 18 year old totally naive to the world um, bringing a bit of hope so I didn't realize that at the time that much but it was it was good timing I was, I was pretty lucky amazing great story mm -hmm. Belfast Belfast is changing <sighs> yeah we're, we're, we're taking on the world yeah even with all the politics all around us we forget I'm sure you like me we ignore the politics mm. because actually business is more important yeah uh, so how do you grow your business into a, a global brand you're, you're, you're taking over the world or the, oh, the vision is to oh, I'm so glad you brought this up Belfast gets such a bad rep and I I have probably been part of the problem if I'm honest with myself I, I've been living in Sydney for the past year. Um, I'm moving back in January. My wife is still there. She doesn't want to give up the summer, so I'm visiting <laughs> visiting Belfast. Um, and I have been for the past few months, but I was somewhat reluctant to move back, to be honest, from living on the beach in Sydney and surfing every day and had, I mean, total paradise. It was spoiled rotten there. Um, and I was apprehensive, like I genuinely felt apprehensive on my, even this this flight home about three or four weeks ago, I kind of thought, oh gee, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm facing here, but there's a, re underneath the politics and the kind of 
mainstream media there there's so much optimism it's not a, like i don't think it presents itself in this um kind of happy clappy disney way it's like it's like the grit yeah. it's the northern irish grit and yeah, people are just like ah government's not here i'm just gonna ply on you know we're just gonna and i think that's like we often say we're not successful because we're very we're innovative or we're creative i don't really like I don't like claiming that because I don't think it's true. I think we just steal from people smarter than us. But I think we're successful because we just fight, you know, we just grit through it and work really, really hard. Um, like there's no, there is no secret. There's no secret to it. Just keep hammering it down. But it's, it, it is amazing to think of where we are today, where we've been. And I have to say, I'm with you, I, I, I think the mood here has changed so much in the last it couple has. of years. It's incredible. It People has. are proud, proud now to say Belfast. And mm. I'm not even from Belfast, but Belfast is my home now, so it's yeah, so incredible. Yeah. I can, um, you know, I spent so much of my youth in Dublin, but Belfast, it is incredible. Like. Totally. Like, we're, we're underdogs, you know, mm. like, we really are underdogs, but there's such a fight that comes from that, mm. you know, and I, I think there's the people that are, that are, responding to that are really doing well and they're not just you know i don't know where the phrase is from but you know like i often say you know or i often quote this that a prophet is never accepted in his hometown Isn't you know it? and I, I kind of i find that a lot with arc when i ran it you know i moved to dublin i moved to the south of ireland because but I feel like the tide's kind of changing a bit and there's there's a community of people, especially in the business tech world where I am, who are just looking at opportunities and running at them. They're on flights to London, week in, week out. That New York flight, they've had to increase the amount of flights to New York because we're just, we're chasing it, you know? It's yeah. it's exciting. It's amazing. And what's the, what do you think the challenges are facing digital companies today? Do you think there is challenges, opportunities? Um. I mean, I think, th define digital companies, well, or companies looking to do yeah, digital. Yeah, well everyone should be going digital, shouldn't they? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think there's there's a fear around the investment. There's a fear around what, things are moving so fast, what do I invest in? Um, mm -hmm. And it's a, I can understand the narrative and I have empathy for it, but I, I'm also fed up hearing it because it, I hear it so much. Um, I think there's this misconception that to get into digital, you have to just, you know, dive in. A third of my, you know, revenue just needs to go right back into digital. I need to overhaul my whole existence as a business. It's not the case. You know, we're, we live in a world of APIs. I don't know if that's too technical. No, it's think... not for you, but... No. For our viewers, oh. our our five viewers, I'm only joking. <laughs> five million viewers who are listening to this. In time, give us time. Yeah. An API is, is it's a connector. It's basically it allows two pieces of technology to talk to each other, mm -hmm. and that that's what the digital revolution is. It's all these startups or mega companies. It doesn't really matter. They've all got APIs now, so they can all talk to each other. So you can build this transformer of a robot that that fun that runs your business for you um but you can start so small you know like you can you can put a chatbot on your website and it, it can increase leads for you you know you can invest a little bit in seo and if your conversion rate is right then you can justify that spend and then you know if you're it doesn't matter what you're spending you're spending five grand on seo if that's bringing you in six grand ramp it up you and know get it get go again quick exactly yeah, you know well. if and and i think that's the excitement the exciting thing about this digital revolution the numbers speak mm -hmm. websites used to be this static thing that we kind of hope that it brings in something now we know if your website isn't performing we can see it if it's it no is hiding. performing it's not mm -hmm. it it's all tracked and it's just this data game now yeah Amazing. My last question then, the importance of oh, design. Oh no, we're out of time already. This is grateful. Uh, the importance of design. 
so we'll, we'll do part two again sometime when you when you move back. Yeah, okay. Okay. So okay the deal. Importance of design for companies uh, and yourselves. Like I, I look at some of the work you've done, your case studies mm. quite incredible. Jealous. Um, Thank you. And learning you can hire work. us. Yeah, that's it. Come <laughs> over. Um, and uh, so, so what is the what? What do you think? Design's important for you guys, critically. Oh, it's yeah. It's so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm incredibly lucky that one of my co-founders is Jordan Moore. He's a bit of a rock star in the design community, and he just he he gets it. He does it in his sleep. Um, design's incredibly important. Although I was just chatting to him today, he's. He's actually doing a talk tonight at a Shopify event and he's talking about design and mm -hmm. he was saying that he feels like an imposter, you know, he, fe he feels like he's been put in this pedestal and he's scared to talk about his design and the thing that makes Jordan great, which I think is actually the key to great, just great design, is this, this design ego that he's let go of. Mm -hmm. he, he, he works at such speed now that he's he's not precious about presenting the best idea anymore. And like I, I think that like that's where design is gonna is gonna win. You know, like even with Toys R Us, we would have been running a hundred A B tests in a day. You know, and that's a hundred different designs. There's no there's no one sitting there with a with a turtleneck on going hmm. You know, Steve Jobs and it saying that's the best one. Yeah, it's gonna win. It yeah. Which you know that was that was the olden days. Now you can test you can test a design on three percent of your audience, and your audience can tell you. So design's incredibly important, but not being precious about mm -hmm. the aesthetics of the of a design. Um, over the functionality, which is ultimately to drive value, yeah. I think that's that's the real key to it. Very good, and that's and then that's where we jump in and drive the traffic. So ah, <laughs> here. combination, yeah, partnership yeah. waiting to happen. Yeah. Here. Done, done. There we go. Well, very good. No, brilliant. Well, look, uh, thank you very much for your time today. It was yeah. amazing, short and sweet. Yeah, it's but we'll have great. part two, part two. But uh, if anyone wants to reach out uh, to your company, find out more about yourselves, follow what you're doing, like I am. Yeah. Where's the best places to go? DawsonAndrews.com. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time again today. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. So that was Kieran coming um, from the Innovation Factory here in the Springfield Road, and it's, and it's Profile Tree who uh, will help you with your content marketing and SEO, and obviously our friends here with the design. Uh, looking forward to the next video. Uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs>